In the next few videos, I want to cover how to optimize the queries that we make to our database so that we can drastically increase the performance of our application by making our queries faster. So what we have here is a sample database I made. It just has fake data of page views. It's kind of like a Google Analytics, except it also segments page views by domains and things like that. I'll show you a little bit more of that. We can see here we have a page views table, and it just has a URI that is viewed, the domain, the created that date, good stuff like that. And we have about 4.6 million records in this data table, so it's not the biggest you may ever come across, but it is still a fairly big table. And I'll just cover this a little bit more. What we have here are users. So the users are like the people who might purchase a SaaS application if this was some kind of SaaS application. And users themselves have customers. So we have kind of a CRM thing here where we are keeping track of customers that this user has. And each customer can have page views. So we have a customer ID and a user ID here referencing the owner of the account. And then the customer, of course, is the customer that we're tracking to see what pages they visit across the domains, the properties that the uh, user owns. So that's basically it. We have users, users have customers, customers have page views. So we're just gonna log in here and see what's up with the application. And we'll pay attention especially to the deed bug bar down here, which tells us some very useful information about our web request, about how expensive certain things are that we're doing. So for example, this page request took 2.6 seconds to load, which is a pretty long time. We have four queries. And if we get some information about those queries, we'll see that they take a bunch of time. So 1.8 milliseconds is really quick. This one took almost a second. This one took a second and a half itself. And we see this one here is under one millisecond. So that's really quick. So what we're going to do is try to optimize the queries that we have here as best as we can and see how to do that with any MySQL database. Now, just to show you the code a little bit, I'll head to PHP Storm and we can see what's going on. So the controller for this is the home controller here and in the index function, we're just doing a few things. So you can see we have a timeline here and we just have a number of page views sorted by the day of the week. So 523, 524 and 525 down here. And then we can change things like show me the last month. Again, three seconds. And we can even sort by stuff like domain or a specific customer as well. So what we're doing here is basically creating a report and we have some filters that we are adding on, which make our queries more or less complex depending on what things we add here, what filters we are applying. So the way that works is here, we have in our index function, it first checks for the filters in this page request. So it's getting the URL parameter timeline and it's gonna just say how many days back in history to go. So it defaults to seven, so that's the one week. Then we might filter by a specific domain or a specific customer or both. And you can see that's just the drop downs here. Whenever we select one, it resubmits the page with whatever parameters and we'll get that information back from the database. And then we have this page views repository, which is just another class. And that is responsible for the main queries here. Basically what it does is it's gonna filter and create that report for us. So this is the object that is going to create the data for us. It's gonna be where our expensive database queries are. So the main function in that page views repository object is this days back function. And that just says go back however many days and optionally also filter by a domain or customer or both. Now I seeded the database on 525. That's about eight days ago as the time of this recording. So I have to fudge the data a little bit and just say, if I say I'm gonna go back seven days in history, that's actually going back seven days plus eight days so that I can end on 525. In other words, so that I get a graph that doesn't just drop off to zero days. All right, so that is specific to our video here. I'm just fudging the data a bit so that we go back in time eight days in addition to whatever date we say. Then I get the very beginning of the day, however many days ago we want. So that just means get the date, but then get the zeroth hour, zeroth minute, zeroth second of that day so that we're starting from the very beginning of the day. So this date variable is the date, the very first day that we wanna start getting data back from the database. So that goes down here, right, where we have created that as greater than or equal to that date. So we're getting all of our data that is greater than or equal to, in other words, data that is newer than the date that we give it. Now, the more interesting thing here is that I am getting all of the page views, but I'm grouping it on each day. So I'm getting the daily total count of page views just by getting a count of their IDs by each date. Um, so what I need to do is have a way for the database to group all of the page views by day, by the date. So the tricky way to do that here is that I actually cast the created at column. The created at column is a timestamp, right? So that has a date and a time associated with it. So by casting it to just dates, we are truncating the time data and just keeping the date. 
So this might say instead of 518 at 3 p.m., this will just give us 518, something like that. And I'm just calling that column date. So down here, we can group by date. And this combined with this um, raw query that we're passing up here is going to give us the number of page views grouped by each individual day. So in the whole 24 hours within that day. Then I say where the user ID is the currently logged in user so that we are segmenting our data only for the currently logged in user. And then we just order by date as well. So we start with the oldest date and move forward in our ordering here. So we're gonna get the count of page views for each day grouped by date and ordered by date. If we have some data for domain or the specific customer, then we add that to the query as well, just as additional where statements, and then we get the query. And then finally here, we actually have a domains, and all I'm doing there is getting a listing of the unique domains that are set for this customer by page views. So in that page view table, one of the columns is a domain, and we can see some of the content here. It's all fake data. We can see that people have page views, and we're actually measuring data across domains in this fictitious app. So our customers might be viewing pages across any number of domains that we have control of. So one of the things we are able to filter across, of course, is each domain. I don't want to list up every single domain because, of course, we have a lot of repeats here. So I have to get a distinct, a unique listing of domains. So that's what I do. I select distinct domain from the page views table, and then I filter it by the user ID. So I'm just getting it for the uh, currently logged in user. So this is all page views associated with all customers that are associated with the currently logged in user. And this just gives me a list of domains that all of the customers in this user's account have visited. So that gives us this list of domains and we can filter on anyone we want. And of course, down here, we'll see this query change a bit because we were saying domain equals this domain, curlin.com. So what we're gonna do here is start with our queries that this is showing us. We're gonna get some information about them. We're gonna use the explain functionality of MySQL to show us which queries are using indexes and which are not. And then we can use that information to build some indexes on our database to reduce the time it takes to make these queries quite a lot.